that war in itself is a display of anarchy. When you talk about war, that is lawlessness at its peak. So when you say you are fighting war to keep Nigeria won, no. You fought the war as a manifestation of your incompetence. In one of our last videos where I brought to you about the reason why His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi apologized to the obedient movement as well as most Nigerians who were calling on him for congratulating General Gowon on his 90th birthday anniversary. These have sparked a lot of reaction. But then, the issue here is Kenneth Okonkwo. And you saw a little clip of what he said, but this is a very long video, but I have tried my best to cut it short to like nine minutes. So the history of Nigeria, like I always said, can never be completed without the mention of the civil war, the massacre of the Igbos. And uh, all of this is what Kenneth Okonkwo explained in seven to eight minutes, where he talked about the issues and also responding to the statement by General Gowon on his 90th birthday anniversary, stating the obvious from the calamity that befall on Nigeria in 1966, as well as the current evil that is being perpetrated by the political class on the civilians or Nigerians as a whole. Let's take a listen to Kenneth Okonkwo. Before independence, the colonial power retained they kind of brainwashed the Nigerian people to maintain their ethnic cleavages. And they needed to make Nigerians live in that disunity so that they could continue their colonization against Nigeria. So they made the North, for instance, to believe that being educationally disadvantaged, they should not rush into independence because of the likelihood that they will be dominated by the more advanced Southern Nigeria. And the North bought into that. And that was why we were delayed from 1954 to 1960, where the actual thing is that Britain just wanted more time to dominate Nigeria. So after independence, that mindset that the South is likely to dominate them remained. And the North was always at every slightest chance, reminding the South that we did not intend to be one country with you because we are suspecting your domination. But the 1966 military coup, pure military coup, has nothing to do with ethnicity or anything even though people who organized it were predominantly from one ethnic group. But that reinforced the belief by the North that these people, we said it, they want to dominate us. And then they carried out a revenge kill in 1966 July, which was meant actually to separate from Nigeria, not to keep Nigeria one. But the Britain also reminded them that the resources are in the East. So if you leave Nigeria, we are going to support the East. So you better run down that you have acquired power to maintain Nigeria as one. And that made them to have a rethink. And by that time, a lot of Igbos, for instance, have been killed during the pogrom, during the massacre. So there was an entrenched suspicion between the ethnic groups. And this led them to go to Aburi for a conference and they reached agreement. And it was still Gowan who came back and reneged on the agreement, which inevitably led to the bitter war. And after the war, Gowan declared again, no victor, no vanquished, and promised to reconcile, rehabilitate, and reconstruct the Southeast, which he failed again to do. So all the available opportunities for him to make Nigeria one and consolidate that unity, he was not able to do. But let us make one point clear, that after a while, when he himself was thrown away by some of those his colleagues, that was when maybe he recognized now, what happened in 1966 was a military coup and not any ethnic coup because he himself was thrown away by the same military people. I wonder which uh, terminology we use to describe the ones who threw him away. But one thing is clear. After that, it looks as if he went into theology, had a rebirth, and he came back and genuinely went through a southeast apologizing and asking for forgiveness for his role in the civil war. And we know that though the Southeast has been marginalized and ill-treated in that war, which was not caused by them, we know that Gowan has tried to make certain types of penance. We should forgive each other because hostilities need not last forever. So I can submit respectfully that ethnic chauvinism, the youthful exuberance of the military young chaps that took over government, who were actually very impressionable at that age, their inability to manage the crisis contributed in the disunity that resulted in the civil war, we must learn to forget and to forgive.
so that we will move ahead as one united Nigeria. I remember what Ojuku said when he came back from exile. He said, we had fought one civil war. We don't need to fight another one. That he's going to go to war to fight if Nigeria is ever threatened again. And I stand by that. Nigeria being the hope of the black man. Nigeria being the hope of Africa. Nigeria being blessed. And in our enlightened self-interest, the capabilities and blessings of Nigeria will be better harnessed. If we come together, live together under one united Nigeria, Nigeria based on equity, unity, peace, and justice, Nigeria will achieve its aims. I support the opinion that we should move ahead now as one united Nigeria, and I'm willing to fight if Nigeria is threatened. Let me point out that presently in Nigeria, what is causing disunity is no longer ethnic chauvinism and religious fanaticism. It is now the incompetence and corruption of the leaders of Nigeria that have inflicted hunger, hardship, degradation, deprivation on the citizens, making them too poor. And when you are poor, even to adhere to theology is very difficult because there's no reception to theology when a man is hungry. A, an angry man is a hungry man. A hungry man is an angry man and is easily irritated no matter what. So the threat to our unity today is poverty, which is orchestrated by the incompetence and corruption of the ruling class. World Bank report just gave a report that more than 129 million Nigerians are poor. And fuel price is down 1,200 naira per liter, unsustainable. And naira has been depreciated to the point that you have 1,700 and something naira per dollar. And you can see electricity. In one week, we have celebrated more than three national grid collapse. And some people are still pretending that they are the leaders of Nigeria. No, they are leaders of darkness, not leaders of light. And they are now the greatest source of our, uh, our disunity. And let me point out, free and fair election is the only solution to our disunity now. Because if we have the ability to choose our leaders in a free, fair, credible, verifiable, periodic election, then we will say that our will will be imposed on the leadership of Nigeria. And they will give us the dividends of democracy. Anything short of that is going to threaten the existence of this country, not because of ethnic chauvinism or religious fanaticism, but because you cannot sustain a diverse people living together in abject poverty. So in all of this, what do you make of this? What is your own thoughts about the accession by Kenneth Okonko? Do you believe in what he said, encompassing everything that had to do with the Nigerian civil war? In fact, from the uh, colonial era to post-colonial down to the military regime and everything down to this current you know dispensation of democracy that we are experiencing a lot of higihaga let me have your take at the comment section but remember like i always said no politician or political party cares about you so always put yourself first before running to defend anybody or any group of individuals thank you for watching